our codfish sticks. Hello. Today we're making proper British fish and chips. <laughs> Guys, that's my best British accent. I can barely, you know, separate my Australian from my British accent. And I would say fish and chips might be the only reasonable food to come out of the UK. Yeah, they're known for having like the worst food ever. But it's just fried codfish with some french fries. And uh, not too much going on, but there's some cooking techniques that a lot of people have probably not done. Maybe you're not so comfortable with. So let me show you what's going on. I mean, this is definitely not something you're going to be able to do tonight after watching this video. You probably don't have everything. So for the fish, we have some of the wild cod from Frankie's Street Range Meat. The oil we're going to fry in is organic refined coconut oil. I think I have this on my Amazon shop, but this whole tub is around $30. And at most, you're probably going to use one third of it. So that oil can be used several times. So for $10 cost, a few meals of fried fish and chips is not that bad. Here we just have a bowl of flour. This is going to be the initial dredge for the cod. This is our frying apparatus. We just have a steel pot with a thermometer. Uh, you could also use an instant read thermometer. This is just a little bit easier uh, because we can just chill and wait instead of having to check the oil constantly. Now over here in the freezer, we have a little bit over one cup of flour, 12 ounces in a container, getting really, really cold because we want the batter to be super cold. And we have our 12 ounces of organic beer here in the fridge. So the batter is gonna be super cold. We'll take this out with the flour when we're ready. Can't forget the chips. So these have been sitting in a brine in the fridge overnight. You don't necessarily have to do this. So I was able to find some organic russet potatoes. Otherwise, I wasn't going to make these because we do have the potato chips on Frankie's Strange Foods now. So, you know, we just peeled the potatoes, squared them off nicely, and this is just a salt brine. Take some of the starch out and it seasons the potato chips. So uh, we're going to dump this water out and put these on this towel. Now I wasn't actually going to do chips, you know, the french fries. I was just gonna do fish, but I decided we might as well do both. One reason is the oil does get fishy and you have to fry the potatoes, then fry the fish, and then fry the potatoes a second time. So ideally you would have two separate vats of oil. And then I was like, well, you might as well just make two separate recipe videos, show you guys how to make the fish and show you guys how to make the fries separately. So we'll probably do a French fry video more in depth next week separately. Uh, but for this, I'm just showing you guys as it is for like one meal, one dinner. It's not that big of a deal if the potatoes have a little bit of a fish flavor to them. So our potatoes are drying out here on the towel. I'm a little worried because you know these potatoes from the supermarket weren't in that great of a shape. So we'll see how they fry up. We're gonna put our oil in our pot and get that heated up and then we'll prep the fish. So this is what's left in the tub after I fried with the oil once. So, you know, pretty decent amount of oil. You don't have to use like a whole deep fryer's worth of oil when you do this. A lot of you guys ask why I wear gloves. It's mainly to prevent my hands from getting dirty because if my hands are full of oil or flour or whatever, it's much easier to just switch to a new pair of gloves instead of taking 30 seconds every time I need to wash my hands. So. Uh, that's what I like doing. Now it's a little warm out, so you know this oil does come out nice and easy. This is probably the only affordable, high quality oil that you really want to fry with. You know, if you're going to start trying to use stuff like clarified butter or beef tallow, uh, it's probably going to be way more expensive for, for this amount of oil. Now, this slotted spoon is what we're going to use to, to move the fish around because the oil will move freely through it. I did buy this kind of wire contraption for the fries though. You don't really need it. You just need some type of steel spoon with holes in it. Now this fish should be mostly frozen because this is how I like doing this. So, you know, I brought this home from Frankie's Strange Meat maybe four or five hours ago. The fish isn't like rock solid frozen, but like the edges are soft. This middle part is still pretty frozen. Um, this fish is a little 
a little harder because it's not as thin, but this is actually frozen. So let me show you guys that. Right, we're just patting dry our fish. And then as you guys could see, you know, this is, this isn't thawed out. It's, it's not completely like rock hard frozen, as I said, but it's basically frozen on the inside and a little soft on the outside. And this is how you get the best temperature when frying. So you don't want the fish rock solid, but you basically want it as cold as possible. And I don't like doing the traditional fish and chips, like huge piece of cod. I like doing fish sticks. So this cod's kind of perfect uh, proportionally because we just have to cut it like three times. So one, or cut it into three pieces that is. So we have three nice pieces of fish here. And then this one, it's a little long. So we'll probably do four pieces here. So we'll cut it in half down the middle. See it's frozen, this came off like ice. And then we'll cut here and here. So we're gonna have you know, pretty nice pieces of fish to eat. Nothing huge. So we have a bit of all purpose flour in this bowl. We're gonna season it with a bit of salt. Mix that together. All right, so we're gonna take these pieces of fish, put them in a bigger bowl because this is not that fun. Uh, you could honestly like keep this flour in the freezer too before you use it for this, but it's not as big of a deal as the batter. Okay, so we have our partially frozen cod sticks all seasoned up in organic flour and salt. Now we have our frozen flour and our very cold beer. Put a nice pinch of salt in this flour and then we're gonna pour the beer in. Again, this is 12 ounces of flour, 12 ounces of beer, uh, one to one ratio on the batter. Now the consistency of this should be like a pancake batter. This is a little liquidy, a little thin, so we're gonna add some more flour. Yeah, so you want like a thin pancake batter. This is kind of close to what we want. I actually added a little too much flour. I think this is a little thicker than what we really want to do. But it should be fine. I don't really want to open up another beer. All right, this oil is getting hot, so I'm going to turn the fan on. We're actually at about 325 degrees, which is where we want to be for frying the French fries the first time. So normally you would bring your oil to about 300. We're at 350, but since I'm putting a lot of potatoes in here, it's going to cool the oil down a bit. So we got our potatoes in the pot. You just want to move them right when you put them in to make sure they don't stick to the bottom. Now, if you're not making French fries, you don't need to use such a large pot. You could actually use like a pretty shallow pan and, and fry the fish in it but the moisture content of the potatoes kind of makes the, the oil foam up a bit. So over here in the back, I'm just swapping the wet towels out for new dry kitchen towels. I'm gonna make sure our cod looks ready. You know, just nice coating of flour on all parts of the cod. Our batter's a little thick. I'm just gonna put a, a, a drop of water in here. Maybe like a tablespoon of water. You guys see the temperature of the oil. It was probably even lower than 250. So this has a nice little gauge on it where you can put this at what temperature you want the oil to be so it kind of matches up. Yeah, if you don't have a, one of these thermometers, like I'm checking the temperature with my instant read thermometer just to make sure. It's around 250. So after five minutes, we are done with the first blanche fry on the potatoes. There shouldn't really be any color on these. So all this does is cook the inside of the potato evenly. And then right before we eat, we throw them in the hot oil and get them nice and brown. Because if you just cook them in very hot oil all at once, the outside is gonna burn before the inside gets cooked. And you could actually take these blanched french fries put them in the freezer and save them for another night. So 
you know, when you're frying, make a big batch of these, and then you won't have to do them next time. And you guys can see, there's only about an inch of oil in this pot, and that's plenty. You know, it's a pretty shallow fry. So we got those potatoes out, and we're waiting for our oil to come up to about 350 for the fish. Maybe even uh, 360, 375, because since, again, we're using that small amount of oil, the temperature is going to drop down very fast when we put this ice-cold batter and ice-cold fish in there. You know, some recipes say to let the batter sit in the fridge overnight. I've tried it both ways. Don't really notice much of a difference. So we got everything ready, guys. Our cod is breaded. The wet batter is here. The oil is coming up to temperature, so as soon as this gets to, you know, 360, we can just get these in as fast as possible. All right, so our oil is at temperature on the gauge. Now we're just gonna take our cod, put it in the wet batter, make sure it's completely covered. It's a little difficult because, you know, where your fingers are, you're not gonna have batter. But then we just put this in gently. You wanna hold it there for about a second so it doesn't like immediately fall down and stick to the bottom. So we got four pieces of fish in here. I'm just gonna push them a little bit to make sure they're not stuck to the bottom. And it looks good. You wanna watch the heat too. So this is still at 350 with the fish in there. I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit. So just remember, it took you know 10 to 15 seconds between fish to get them in here. So ideally we kind of take them out in that same order we put them in. Now this over here, you know, these three fish and this batter, I can just save this and use this tomorrow night. You know, I'll strain the oil out and then fry this tomorrow because I'm not gonna eat, you know, all this fish in one day. You know, a little bit of the flour on a smaller plate. Just a little more flour on there to keep it dry. And then this batter, just put a cover on it and put it in the fridge. So back to the fish frying business. We're gonna turn these over. Now I will say guys, uh, when I did this the first time, I had the pot on the back of the stove. That, that's a lot safer, that's where you should put it. Total cook time for the fish is probably four minutes. And then we're gonna let it rest. You know, the, the fish is not like the french fries. The fish can rest five, 10, 15 minutes and be just as good as when it came out of the fryer. The fries, however, the french fries, not as much. So even though we've mixed these up a bit, you can kind of tell by the coloring, you know, which one we put in first. So we're going to take out our first one. Let the oil drain a bit. And we're putting it on a towel lined plate. Now wait a few seconds. Take our second one out. Let the oil drip off. Wait another 10 seconds for the third one. Drain the oil off. And we'll take our last one out. So we have our four pieces of fish done. We're gonna put these on the side to cool off. The temperature of our oil is about 350, so we wanna get it up to 375 for the french fries. However, you know, we have a bunch of pieces of fish in here, which is why I like using separate oil for the fries and for the fish. All right, this is a dangerous but hypothetical solution. I have a stainless steel strainer that I'm, ta I'm taking out the fried fish batter that fell off the fish. Yeah, guys, so you don't have to do this. Go buy the potato chips on Frankie's Strange Foods and uh, you won't have to make french fries too. Oh, I was bound to burn my hand a little bit. So we're just about 375. Oil's smoking up pretty hot. So let's get these french fries back in here. So this should just be 
two to three minutes really quick. You guys can see these fries are, look how quick these fries are browning up. You guys can see, look how quick these fries are browning up. Not even 30 seconds in here. Yeah, those are getting nice and brown and crispy. I'm gonna take this away because it just gets in the way. You can buy like a candy thermometer like that that probably fits a pot better and, and isn't as hazardous. You kinda want it almost burnt, but you know, if these fries have been in here for about two minutes, you don't want them to soak up that much more oil. So we got all our French fries out. This oil can be reused once to do the same thing. If you're just doing French fries in it, you could probably use it three times. If you're just doing fish in it, you can probably use it three times. Either way, you're gonna have to add a little more oil each time and then I would just dispose of it. So you like run this through a wire strainer into another steel bowl and then you reuse it. I'm just gonna pat these dry a little bit. So we're gonna take our French fries put them in a steel bowl and then take a nice handful of salt and gently sprinkle the salt in while you toss the chips. Try one. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, I forgot to hit record, but we just plated up our fish and chips. I feel like I'm back in a New York restaurant, except I'm not getting poisoned this time. The fries are pretty good. When I bought these potatoes, I didn't touch them. They were like really mushy and soft to the touch. So you need pretty good fresh potatoes to get really crispy. But the french fries are still pretty good. No fishy taste at all, but if you go to fry them the second time, the oil is gonna like oxidize overnight a little bit and it will have a bit of a fishy flavor. Of course, we gotta try the star of the show, guys. Our codfish sticks. Oh. Forgot to salt the codfish. Just like we put salt on the outside of the french fries when we fried them, you gotta do the same with the cod. Take another bite. Very delicious. The only other time I ever had fish and chips was at that John George restaurant and they weren't very good. This blows it out of the water. So you have that really juicy, flaky, look at it's still steaming, guys. This, the fish is good for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes after you fry it. Juicy, delicious cod in the middle because we kept it frozen. So it's like perfect temperature. If this fish was warm or even cold, imagine how overcooked it would be. You know, this is perfectly cooked through. And then you have a nice batter on the outside. If that batter was any thicker, you know, this fish would have had too much breading on it. So you get the really nice cod flavor. You can taste the lager in the batter on the outside and it's just really fatty and flavorful and salty. Fish is phenomenal. I've made this like five times so far, like in the past two weeks, cause it's so good. The French fries on the other hand, it's a lot of prep work to peel and dice the potatoes. So we have potato chips now on Frankie's Strange Foods you guys can buy. That's what I would honestly eat. Unless you have really good fresh potatoes because and we put a lot of effort into making these potatoes and they still turned out a little soggy. I used all my lager on fish and chips so we just have organic cider now. I guess cheers guys. Sam Smith, I got these at Wegmans. It's like the only commercially available organic beer or cider or whatever. Well guys, thanks for joining me. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy my fried fish and chips cheat meal without actually feeling 
like I was poisoned as if I went to a restaurant. But yeah, you guys can get the fish on frankiestrangemeat.com. I think making this with halibut would be really good too, but the cod is perfectly fine. On the foods website, we have flour. You can get the salt too, and the potato chips. I was actually thinking of, there's this artisanal malt vinegar that one of my distributors sells, and I couldn't get it in time for this video, but I think that would be really delicious on any fried food, but it's kind of a niche item. Maybe I'll just get a few bottles of it, and we'll have it on the website next week or the week after. Uh, it's just like an artisanal malt vinegar, and if you guys are unfamiliar, malt vinegar is what they put on fish and chips, and they also serve it with tartar sauce sometimes. But classically, I think it's just the malt vinegar. And you like can't buy it on Amazon or online. There's no like organic malt vinegar. I just found this niche distributor. Uh, again, guys, frank com. Check out all my businesses. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. It's a little long video, but um, this took a while to make.